Uh, hello YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a video on the Queen's Gambit and specifically I'm only going to be covering the Queen's Gambit declined. I'm going to be trying to give you a complete repertoire that you can play after the moves d4, d5, uh, c4, e6. This begins what we call the Queen's Gambit declined. The Queen's Gambit declined is a, is a very basic setup for meeting uh, the Queen's Gambit. Basically what the idea is, is Black just wants a very simple way to develop his pieces, and he wants to have a simple plan to get everything out and get everything to a square, which isn't always easy to do in the Queen's Gambit. It's one of the things that the Queen's Gambit tries to do to Black, is it tries to get you, if you play something like the Accepted, you end up having to play a lot of very awkward developing moves, some of which don't make a lot of sense. So basically here... The idea is really simple. You're going to bring your kingside pieces out first. You're going to play knight f6, bishop e7, and you're going to castle kingside. And then you're going to take a look and you're going to see what happened in the middle of the board. And depending on what happened in the middle of the board, if they played the exchange variation or if they left the tension, will determine how you finish the development of these queenside pieces. If they leave the tension in the middle of the board, you might play something like a Tartakower variation, where you play b6, bishop b7, knight on b7, and c5, and finish your development of the queen side that way. If they have exchanged in the middle of the board and get what we call a Karl's bad pawn structure, you might end up trying to develop your bishop on this diagonal, because that diagonal at that point makes more sense. So in this first video, the main thing we're going to cover is we're going to cover the uh, exchange variation or the so-called Carlsbad variation. So after knight c3, you can play just straight knight f6. Now, when you play knight f6, one of the things that you're going to be allowing here is you're actually going to be allowing uh, this knight on g1 to choose where it develops to if white decides to play an exchange variation, also known as the Carlsbad pawn structure. And this knight now has the option to go to e2 or f3. So if you allow the knight to go to e2, which is considered one of the most aggressive choices in the Carlsbad pawn structure, then you have to have something prepared against uh, this line, of course, and it has to be something uh, relatively solid. Now, I personally like to allow this variation. I don't have a problem with it because I have special preparation against it, which I will share with you today. But it is also possible to play the move bishop e7 and try to coax this knight into going to the f3 square because basically black, uh, white doesn't have the move bishop g5 right away, which he would normally have. So unless he's going to put his bishop on f4, which is also a possibility, he's going to have to spend a move at this point to bring his knight to the f3 square. And once that knight comes to the f3 square, now you're going to be playing a Carlsbad pawn structure with the knight on f3. And these are considered a little bit more um, sedate. They're not considered as dangerous for black as the pawn structures with the knight on e2. So that would be considered kind of a minor victory if you can play bishop e7. And of course, bishop e7, um, also called the, the Cherosek variation, um, was one of Kasparov's favorites. Um, so going back to this move, uh, knight of six, because this is kind of a, a big animal here. So we'll take a look at if they play bishop g5, bishop e7, e3, castles, and then they exchange, they play bishop d3, c6, and then they play uh, queen c2, uh, knight on b to d7, it's kind of forced, and then knight on g to e2. Okay, so we've hit kind of a, a critical juncture, uh, let's say. Uh, black has to kind of decide what to do. Now, there's the old main line, which is all well and good. Uh, you can play rook e8 here, and actually I still recommend this move, even if you're going to play my little uh, improvement, or uh, my not, not necessarily an improvement, but kind of a, a lesser played move. So there's rook e8, castles, and then of course here, the main move is basically just retreating this knight to f8, and then bringing this knight to g6, and then eventually playing uh, knight to e4. My only objection to this idea, because this idea has been around for a very long time, and of course this is a very solid idea, this is definitely the way to go um, for, for main lines, is just that everybody seems very familiar with it. Um, uh, it. It's a pretty fair bet that your opponent has a ton of preparation on this if they're a, 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 a well-prepared um, opening player. If they've gotten this far, they probably are a well-prepared opening player. Um, I like 
personally to get my opponents into positions that are maybe a bit unfamiliar to them. And I like to get my opponents into positions where I have a lot of tricks and I know what those tricks are. And as long as I don't step too far away from equality, that's fine. As long as I don't step too far away from where my position is still um, playable and where I still have a good position, that's okay. So my personal favorite move here, and, and, it, and it's a lot, it's lesser played because once you play this move, once you play h6, it's no longer really possible to bring this knight to the g6 square. And that's why a lot of players, uh, they don't like this move. A lot of players frown on this move because they think we shouldn't do this. And certainly after you play a move like this, you have to be very precise in how you play uh, the rest of your moves. So after bishop uh, to h4, h4, we're going to play knight e4, and then bishop e7, queen e7. Now this is one of the things about the Carlsbad pawn structure, and this is one of the reasons that earlier move orders are tried, like especially with bishop e7, and I'll show you some of the modern move orders a little bit later. But basically, if the bishops get exchanged in the Carlsbad pawn structure, that's a really good thing for black. And the reason that is is because white has what they call a really simple plan in this position for an advantage. White has a structural advantage. Black only has kind of one center pawn, and he's got a C pawn, a D pawn, and an F pawn. And that's very much so inferior to this D pawn, E pawn, and F pawn. Because white has both of his central pawns. He's got a D pawn and an E pawn. But black only has one absolutely central pawn. He's got that D pawn. Okay, so because of this, white has a structural advantage. And the way white usually takes advantage of the structural advantage is by conducting what they call a minority attack, which basically means he's going to play rook b1, he's going to play b4, he's going to play b5, and then eventually he's going to try to capture on c6, make c6 a weakness when you recapture, and now c6 is going to be a weak square, and then he's just going to basically try to wrench that weakness. Now, that being said, one weakness is not enough to lose a game of chess. So even if white manages to follow through completely with his plan, black should be okay. But black has some stuff that he can work with, too. Black has, for one thing, a space advantage over here on the king side. And this is actually a really dangerous place to have a space advantage, because that's where the kings are. So if you can get your pieces over to the king's side more rapidly and more readily, that's something that you can take advantage of. That's another reason why black wants to do something else. He wants to get rid of bishops. Because if he can get rid of bishops, especially light-squared bishops, but also dark-squared bishops, his knights will be able to occupy these advanced central squares, and he'll be able to utilize his space advantage. And his space advantage will be more important and white's structural advantage will be less important. So that's basically what's going on in the Carlsbad, is it's a battle of black is trying to prove some sort of space advantage, and he's trying to prove that the squares e4 and c4, especially for his knights, are super important and super valuable. And in order to do that, he wants to get the bishops off the board. White, on the other hand, has his structural advantage, and he's trying to make the structural advantage work with the moves b4 and b5 and then wrenching these structural weaknesses for black on the queen side. So all of that being said, there's a lot of reasons to hate h6 when you think about the structure. It doesn't allow you to later rook lift, say, rook e6 to h6 because h6 is in the way. It makes it more difficult to play knight f8 to g6 because now g6 is a weak square. All of that being said, there are reasons that I like it. For starters, I've run into a lot of people that will change the structure and take here and then try to play a move like, say, knight g3. And now after knight f6, just kind of fortifying this pawn, at this point, black has solidified his space advantage. And this is a big deal. Actually, I think black might even be a little bit better in these positions. And if white tries to continue with a normal kind of minority attack here with, say, a move like rook b1, um, then we can continue with a very simple move. We can simply play b6. And now we're actually threatening to play bishop a6 and bishop d3 with tempo, which is not only a cool little uh, tactic, it, it's also strategically just a really good idea if we can get our bishop on the d3 square, get our bishop on the long diagonal, and follow up with c5 and say rook a c8. Black just clearly has an advantage here. He has an advantage in the center and he has an advantage in space. So that's kind of what I'm going for when I play 
this early h6 and knight e4. So I'm trying to get them to exchange, take back, I'm going to take, and then I have these ideas of, of both b6 and I have these ideas of c5 down the road. And that's going to be very uncomfortable for white. So white shouldn't take here. What white should play is white should play uh, basically rook a e1. And then black doesn't have anything much better than knight on d to f6. And then we're going to see the move f3. We don't have anything better. We have to exchange. White has to take back with the knight. Otherwise, the pawn on e3 will hang. And now here is a really critical moment. I really want to play the move uh, c5 here. I would love to change uh, this pawn structure and give white this weakness on the e3 square. Now, unfortunately, it's not tactically possible to do it right here. It's not tactically possible kind of on a positional level. So like if I play the move uh, right away, c5 question mark, dc5, queen c5, one possibility that white has is white can immediately exchange queens and then unfortunately after the queen exchange this structure is not favorable for black at all we just end up with an isolated pawn on d5 we have no real way of adding a significant amount of pressure to the e3 square so white is just going to end up being able to play moves like king f2 knight d4 bishop b3 put pressure on our isolated pawn possibly eventually win it and we're not going to be able to put a significant amount of pressure on e3 because of course we've lost one of our main pieces for doing that which was our queen um, and we really didn't want to do that so what's interesting though is I, I don't want to throw away this idea of playing c5 okay there's a lot of players in this position it's actually the most common move is to play bishop e6 and the point of bishop e6 is okay we're going to put kind of a stopper on e4 at least for a little while we we don't want white to play e4 so there's a little bit of poison to the move e6 basically if white plays e4 we can take take and then queen b4 and unbelievably enough we're, we're winning this pawn on b on d4 because the move queen f2 is going to fail to the move knight to g4 and uh the bishop is uh, is also holding the f7 square so here's what i've kind of discovered here's like this cute little trick that i've discovered is you don't have to hold f7 and, and this is something that just makes this, this so much fun um, to play against people that just aren't familiar with the idea. So after knight takes c3, my recommendation is queen d6. I know this is like a boring mechanical way to prevent e4, but it works. Like if they play e4 here and you play d takes e4, the, the, you're simply attacking the pawn on d4 and you're just going to take it with check. So at this point, most players will find the move queen f uh i'm sorry most people will find the move after queen d6 they will find the move queen f2 defending this pawn on d4 and preparing to play the move e4 so i play a very tricky move here i play the move bishop d7 just developing connecting my rooks i'm actually prepping the move c5 so i'm getting ready to play the move c5 where i'm covering uh this b5 square with my bishop this is my idea. I just want to play c5. It, it, it's not a complicated idea. But what is complicated about it is it makes it look like, at least on the surface, that white can play e4, which he can't. And this is really neat. What you do is you take, you take, and then a lot of times the move knight g4 isn't even on their radar because they're thinking, well, f7 is hanging. Knight g4 is completely winning. You can play knight g4, and then if they play queen takes f7, king h8, they have to defend against the threat queen h2 mate. So they have to play the move queen f4, and then queen d4 comes with check. And if we want to, we can be really boring. We can actually just play queen takes d3, and that's probably a winning position for black. Uh, but we can also be even more vicious. We can play rook f8, and we can trade off two pieces for the rook bring our king to h7, and now we have dual threats of queen d3 and knight f2. And because of those dual threats, basically white is completely dead. He's going to have to give up this exchange after, say, knight f2, rook f2, queen f2, and this is just major, major advantage uh, black. So going back to what basically our idea was in the position is if we rewind this back to the move queen d6 and then queen f2 and now bishop d7, the correct move here is to play the move h3 to prevent that knight g4 move. So we've gotten them to play like a queen f2 and an h3, 
now finally we get a chance to play our idea, which is to play c5 and to either transform this pawn structure with d captures c5, queen captures c5, which is very good for black, or to transform the pawn structure on our own, we could play c takes d4. And at this point, I think this is a very good position for, for black, because to be totally honest, um, white probably has nothing better than to try to relieve this pressure kind of immediately with a move like e4. And if we're relieving this pressure immediately, I would dare to say that black is already um, at least completely equal after something just like this. Takes, 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 takes. And we've got white is the one with the isolated pawn that we're going to be attacking, and black is the one with the, um, with the better uh, pawn structure, so to speak. So that's kind of my tricky recommendation. Uh, you know, if you want to play a Carlsbad and you want to let them play uh, knight on g to e2, um, that's like my tricky recommendation with h6 is to play this variation with queen d6. So the other way they can, of course, play this is they can bring the knight to the square uh, f3. So we'll just go back here to instead of queen c2, we've got knight f3. So this is another way for them to play it. And I recommend kind of a similar idea. You can play rook e8, queen c2, you can play h6. And again, if bishop f4, um, you can just immediately play the move uh, c5. And we can transfer this into uh, an isolated queen pawn position where the bishop isn't terribly happy on the f4 square. Um, so it is actually also possible to play uh, knight h5 here. This this is also a playable uh, way to play this position. Which is actually, it's it's a very similar idea. And eventually you play c5 and you get a very similar thing. But you gain a couple tempo along the way. So it's a little bit more complex, a little bit more advanced. But knight h5 is also uh, a playable concept. Or if you want, you can just play c5 right away. So if they play bishop h4... It's very similar to the other line. You play knight e4, they exchange the bishops, which again, exchanging those bishops is always good. And once we can exchange the second set of bishops, that'll be good as well. So now at this point, if they play bishop takes e4, and this is actually a little bit more difficult of a position for white, because he doesn't have the readily available way to kick this knight, so to speak, out of the e4 square. So if he exchanges, if he plays bishop e4, d e4, knight d2, we can actually just hold this pawn with bishop f5, and then we can play knight d7 and knight f6. And this is a really awkward position for white, because even after he plays a move like f3, we just play bishop h7. And if he exchanges everything on e4, he ends up with permanent weaknesses. And we end up with um, the advantage of pawn structure. And if he pushes f4, we just bring the bishop straight back to f5. And again, we have this advantage of having extra space. And the space advantage should uh, certainly yield us something. So the other way uh, white can play this, which is also kind of a mistake, is he can castle queenside. And I've had quite a few opponents do this. If they do this, it's actually a huge advantage for black after simply knight a6, which is a big, big time threat. We're threatening knight before knight d3 check. So they kind of have to play a3. But when they do, b5 is very nearly, just b5, b4 is very nearly a winning attack. So you're, you're, you're probably um, have a huge advantage after b5, b4. So... Those are basically kind of like my two kind of novelty-esque recommendations in the um, QG uh, in the QGD. Now, if you want to, um, you can of course play uh, the modern main line, which maybe I'll cover um, in another video. I'll cover the modern main line, the so-called Charlesic variation, uh, beginning with uh, Bishop e7, which uh, prevents the idea of Knight on g to e2. Uh, but if you don't want to even bother avoiding it and you want fewer lines to memorize, you can use this h6 idea. You can get people kind of uh, off off of their theory, and there's a few traps in there where you can potentially win some, some quick games. So anyways, this is uh, video number one of the uh, Queen's Gambit Declined. Um, this is probably just going to be part one of the uh, exchange variation, uh, the Carlsbad formation. Uh, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you learned something new about chess.